The following broadcast is brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International. stand and lift your hands and let's pray. Father, we thank you even as we go to your word this morning to give us utterance in the Holy Ghost that we might speak your word unto your people today. Let every ear be in order to hear. Let every heart be receptive to receive all that heaven has. And Father, we pray that even as you confirm your word with signs and wonders following in the lives of each and every individual here today and those that watch by way of television, that the word will grow and prevail in their home, in their marriage, in their children, their grandchildren, their neighborhood, their region shall be shaken by your mighty hand. And we thank you for it even now and we give you praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. amen. You may be seated. Something happened to me a few months ago that I cannot shake. And I want you to go with me to the book of Revelation, chapter 1. This was our theme for the whole of the fire camp meeting. So maybe the Lord will catch some of you up today that were not in those meetings. Revelation, chapter 1, and verse 10. This is John and the Isle of Patmos. And I'm reading from the Amplified, so if it comes across a little loud, it's because it's Amplified. If you need the notes, they're in the bulletin. If you'd raise your hand, always when you come into church, grab a bulletin. Don't come sit down without one because the notes of what I'm going to be sharing is in there. We make it available for you online, revival.com. The message is up on the internet. Verse 10 says, I was in the spirit wrapped in his power on the Lord's day. Say this after me. I was in the spirit spirit. wrapped Wrapped. in his power, power. which is almost like caught up, enraptured, wrapped in a state of ecstasy, joy, you know. And I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, like a calling of a war trumpet, saying, I'm Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Write promptly what you see, your vision, write it in a book and send it to the seven churches. And then he goes on, verse 12, and he said, I turned to see whose was the voice that was speaking unto me. And on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a robe which reached to his feet and with a girdle of gold about his breast. His head and his hairs were white like, like, like white wool, as white as snow. And his eyes flashed like flames, a flame of fire. If you, if you see Jesus as he really is, one look in his face and you'll never be the same. It's impossible. It's impossible. His feet glowed like burnished bright bronze, as if it had been refined in a furnace. And his voice was like the sound of many waters. And in his right hand he had seven stars, and from his mouth there came forth the sharp two-edged sword. And his face was like the sun shining in full power at midday. So you imagine you couldn't even look upon him really, the brightness of the glory. And he says, when I saw him, I felt that his feet is dead. But he laid his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last and the everlasting one. And the Amplified says this, I'm living in the eternity of eternities. I died, but see, I'm alive forevermore. And I possess the keys of death and and the Hades, the realm of the dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is so powerful. If I read it from the Aramaic, 
It says, uh, when I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, I saw seven golden lampstands. And walking amongst the lampstands, I saw someone like the Son of Man wearing a full-length robe with a golden sash over his chest. His head and his hair were white like wool, white as glistening snow, and his eyes were as flames of fire. His feet were gleaming like bright metal, as though they were glowing in a fire. And his voice was like the roar of many rushing waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars, and out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword, and his face was shining like the brightness of the blinding sun. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, but he laid his right hand on me, and I heard uh, his reassuring voice saying, don't yield to fear. I'm the beginning and the, and the end, the, 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 the living one. I was dead, but now look, I'm alive forevermore, and I hold the keys that unlock death and the unseen world. And of course, then he wrote, which is so powerful. And of course, we read the book of Revelation today, and we do not touch it, nor do we alter it. I see many people changing the book of Revelation, and the Bible says if you change it, you'll be cursed. So just leave it just like it is. Many things you won't understand because you can't understand, because your brain, with all due respect, does not have the capacity to grasp the greatness of the creator of heaven and earth. But what happened to me, uh, you know, and I've taught along these lines now for many years, leading up now to uh, January, which will be 40 years of doing this. You know, you think, you think you've been doing it long, you understand everything, you know, you know much, but one thing I've learned about walking with the Lord, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. And that's why I find it pretty amusing to get around preachers or theologians and they all pontificate, you know, uh, oh, wow, they great knowledge and whatever, and the Lord is laughing because they don't know anything. They, like in kindergarten, like a bunch of kids, you know, they, they have no clue. They think they know, but they don't. Because unless you've had an encounter with God, the knowledge you have is just head knowledge. Are you with me? There's two kinds of knowledge that you see in the Word of God. There's gnosis, which is natural knowledge, that which is uh, assimilated through your five physical senses, you know. And then there's epinosis, which is revelation knowledge, like what Peter said to Jesus. Uh, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And upon this rock of revelation, not upon Peter, Peter wasn't the first pope, but upon the rock of revelation that he was the Christ, the Son of the living God, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So there's many people that have natural knowledge, but they don't have uh, revelation knowledge. They don't, and it's not revelation contrary to the scripture. That's what people think. Well, I, I don't want to, you know, the word of God is sole authority. Yes, it is. But if you don't have revelation of it, you don't understand. That's why the Bible says to study, to show yourself to prove unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divided in the word of truth. And so they, if you rightly divide it, you can also wrongly divide it. So there's an Old Testament, there's a New Testament. You don't throw away the old because you suddenly have the new. The old is important to even understanding the new. The old is the types and shadows, the point of way to the better covenant that's signed and sealed, not by the blood of bulls and goats, but by the blood of the lamb. And so that's what's so important that people understand that. And so there's certain things from the Old Testament that we don't adhere to today, uh, which I'm very happy for. We don't, we don't practice circumcision. I'm so happy that we don't do altar calls for people to come and be circumcised. But that was imperative back in the Old Testament and when God came to Abraham as a man. Of course, the right time to get circumcised as a boy is when you're eight days old, not before eight days and not after eight days. Eight days, they said, is the right time to be circumcised when the blood flows at the, for whatever reason, that's when it will be the right time to do that. If you wanted to do that, you could do that. But God, when he appeared to Abram, he appeared to him as a full-grown man and said, circumcise yourself. And he had to go do that. And not only him, but everybody that was working for him. So that, at that time, you either believe God spoke to Abraham or he lost his mind, you know. <laughs> but, so, uh, but it was a sign of the covenant. Now, what I'm trying to say to you is the circumcision that comes to us now comes in our hearts. Our hearts are circumcised. But 
We, we don't take pieces of the scripture and say, well, I accept that, I don't accept this, I believe that, I don't believe this. Some people take a little bit of the old covenant, a little bit of the new covenant, and they made up their own covenant. So one minute they're under the law, the next minute they're under grace. That's why the Bible says rightly dividing the word of truth. You have to know, you have to understand, you have to perceive, you have to know what Jesus purchased for you at Calvary. You have to know what part of that is redundant, what part of that that we use as a type and a shadow for what we have today. Can you say amen? So, um, whew, shakabaya, hallelujah. Help me today, just help me, I'm hanging on for dear life, okay. So, what happened was, when, when you read this passage of scripture in the Amplified, in verse 18, He said, and the ever-living one, I'm living in the eternity of eternities. So, you know, of course, I mean, I've taught this for years, but what people don't understand, I meet many ministers and they say, well, we have a meeting and the Lord really showed up at that meeting, you know, so we had a service, God really showed up. But if, is that actually correct? Did you actually have a meeting and the Lord actually showed up at your meeting? Is that correct? It's actually not correct. Here's what's correct. There is a meeting that's going on before the throne of God that is happening 24-7. It has never stopped from eternity past until for all the ages it will continue. So much so that there are creatures before the throne that all they do is cry, holy, holy, holy. And they don't change their song. It's only on earth that man gets bored with the songs and we need another song. You know, we've sang that, we sang that thing till we can't sing it anymore. It's only man that gets bored, but these creatures are before the throne and they've been singing for eternity past and all their cries are holy, holy. And as they cry and worship him, they see another side of God that they never saw before. And that's why they don't get bored. Are you with me? Those creatures, listen, they will all be quiet when you and I stand on that day and sing the song of the redeemed because they won't be able to sing with us because they don't know what it is to be lost and found. Are you with me? That, that, that's the difference of what's going to happen on that day. But here we do it in faith. That's why the Bible says, blessed are those that have not seen and yet believed. Somebody said, well, it'd be really easy if you're standing before God to really worship him because you can actually see him. Yeah, but blessed are those that have not seen and yet believed. We worship him in faith. We honor him in faith. We serve him in faith. We don't serve him out of feelings. We don't serve him because if you feel good, then you're on a high and then I'm really serving God. And then you're not feeling that well, now I'm not really serving the Lord because you're up and down, you're like a yo-yo. You're up and down, up and down. One day you're hot, the next day you're lukewarm, the next day you're cold, which I don't even know how people live like that. You have to make a decision. I'm gonna stay on fire for God. And you have to protect that fire. Don't allow other people to come put the water out of your fire. If you're cooking a fire, are you going to let the next door neighbor come in with a hose pipe and start putting your fire out? Hey, I'm cooking here. Get off my property. Get off my lawn. You know, so I mean, you put your foot down, you protect your fire. It's the same way with your heart. It's the same way with your heart. Protect your heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issues of life to make sure that nothing comes to stop, to put the fire out. So Jesus says, I'm living in the eternity of eternities. Now, that means anything that is done by the Holy Ghost is in eternity. Everything that is done by the flesh or by tradition or by religion is just in the now. And it will will never speak. Now, I'll prove this to you because the Bible says all heaven rejoices over one sinner that comes to repentance. That means every time we get people saved, heaven is rejoicing. Can you imagine every moment that we're leading people to Christ, the whole of heaven is rejoicing. So can you imagine there's people being saved around the world right now, everywhere around the world, 7.5 billion people. And there's people telling people about Jesus right now. And somebody, somebody just got saved. Somebody just said yes to Jesus. Somebody just accepted Jesus. So heaven is a place of great noise, great noise. They, they, you know, somebody said, well, God's up there, he's mad, he's angry. No, he ain't. 
Jesus is weeping. No, he's not. He's praying for you. People got their theology all messed up. Heaven is rejoicing. Heaven's not all weeping. Heaven's not crying. Oh, and the whole of heaven's running around depressed, taking medication because they're worried about what's going on on the earth. Heaven is a place of great rejoicing. Can you say amen? You say, well, how come heaven is in a place of great rejoicing? Because heaven already knows the end story. Heaven already has the end. If you in the eternity of eternities, then you already know what's coming. If you read the back of the book, you already know what the story is. So the chapters are being written now, but you already know the end outcome. So what are you worried about? Because you already know that even now, even though we're here, in Hillsborough County, even though we're here in Tampa, Florida here today, but in actuality, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but in that which is to come. And all things are under our feet because we're seated in Him. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. That's your position even now in Get out of the realm of the mind. Stop trying to interpret what God does through your head. Grab a hold of it with your heart and understand all that was purchased for you 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross. He made the way for everyone to come. Whosoever, let him come. Everyone, every single person. No reservation, no restrictions. He says, come. Of every tribe and every tongue, come. So let me tell you what happened. So we went to St. Louis, which is a city where we've had major revival from 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, all the way through probably about last time I was there, about 2008. But because I'm a loyal person to a local church, you know, the church had changed, the pastor handed to his son. Of course, they went a different way. You know, if you do a 90-minute service, how am I going to come in there? I, yeah. what, do you, what am I going to do? Are you with me? Well, you have 35 minutes. For what? What am I going to do in 35 minutes? So basically, I didn't have a church to go to. And I wasn't going to go rent a neutral venue because the Lord spoke to me, stay in churches, you know, it's important. The day will come when we'll go back doing neutral venues. And the day will come when we leave and do some four-week revivals. The reason we stopped those, because everybody started doing four-week revivals, and I looked at some of them, and I wouldn't have extended it past two days. You know what I mean? It's just a meeting with a sign-up. We're having a meeting. But there was no presence of the Lord. I mean, I'm not saying God didn't move or do something, but when you're still beating brains out at 27 weeks of a meeting and there's still 140 people, something's wrong. Are you with me? Anyway, that's another subject I won't get into today. So uh, when Pastor Brock said to me, he said, uh, Pastor, we're going to go to St. Louis. I promise you, my, my initial response was, I rolled my eyes. I did great. It's just phenomenal. You know, I had no plans to go back. So we go there on a Monday night, and I was shocked. Here we have almost a, uh, just a thousand people backpacked into this place. The pastor got up, and he, and of course, he was all touched. He was in the student, I think it was 19 or 20 in university. And when we were there in that extended meetings, he never went back to university. He just came to the meetings and never went back. His mother thought he was studying university, but he wasn't. He's in all the services, two meetings a day. So basically, by the time the revival came to an end, he couldn't even pick up the classes. He, he, <laughs> so he never went back and basically went into the ministry. So your revival can ruin your whole idea of what you thought you were going to do, you know. Four weeks just move you into another dimension. And so 
the pastor got up and he said, how many were touched in the meetings? And I looked out, and I mean, hands were everywhere. And I looked at them, I mean, I could see people were older, you know. You could see people 25 years later, they're older, you know. But they're there, the faces are shining. They were people that were touched by the fire of God. Some had continued in revival. Some people thought it had finished. They thought it was over. You know, they all wanted to come back again. Let's redig a well or whatever. People's theology is though the Holy Spirit lives in the ground. He doesn't live in the ground. He lives in people's hearts. Are you with me? And so there's no well that we have to go redig in some city where God once upon a time moved. It's about people catching the fire. The same Holy Ghost that touched many of the greats uh, down through the years will come touch you. Amen. Amen. You don't have to go find the bones of some dead prophet to go lie on. (laughs) Hello. People are actually doing that today. You got to be crazy. They go lie on a tombstone. Uh, I couldn't believe it, but they do that. Trying to get some last vestige of an anointing that was in the grave that they could, you know, because they read in the Bible where, you know, they threw a dead man on the prophet's bones and came back to life. It, it was on his bones that he fell, not on the grave, you know. Come on, yeah. Hello. Yes. It's one thing if the bones touch you. It's another thing lying on the grave. People are crazy. Yeah, why seek ye the living amongst the dead? Amen. It's like, it's like they think the Holy Spirit lived in a person. You know, he does live in people, but he doesn't, when, when they die, he don't stop moving. He's, he's, he's touching others. People are being raised up to be carriers of the anointing and the fire of God. Are you with me? Amen. Well, I, if only we could go back to those meetings. I wouldn't want to go back to those meetings for anything in the world. Because let me tell you, we didn't have the army we have today. Listen, no, I'm not making that up to make you feel good here today. We've graduated 4,000 people out of this university and they've gone all over the world. Churches are springing up. Bible schools are being raised up. We didn't have that back in 93, 94. This mass crusade evangelist sitting here among you. You might be sitting back there near the back and think, oh, I'm just sitting next. No, they, they have mass crusades in Brazil and, and Guatemala and whatever. You don't even know who you're sitting next to. Hello. Don't, hey, don't just sit around here and look at one or two people think, well, I don't know who these people are. There's, there's some fire sitting here in the chair. There's some power sitting here in the chair. And I'm not just making that up. That's a fact. I know what the people do. This is their base. People come and go. This place is like Grand Central Station. People are coming and going. We have a little lady, 83 years of age. Of course, we headed for Mongolia. And, and she, she'd been a missionary in Mongolia for many years. She might be here this morning, or maybe she's still in Mongolia. And she said to me, Pastor, I'm heading back to Mongolia. I said, you're going to Mongolia? I'm going too. She said, yeah, I'm going to go prepare the way for you. I said, wow. So I sewed into that. We had to come and have lunch with us. And she's 83 on, on a mission trip to Mongolia. And now we got, we got people, no, we got 65 not here, but in other churches, 65-year-olds looking for retirement. My God, I just need to retire. Here we've got an 83-year-old lady doing another run. Come on. I'm telling you, God will use every single person. God will use every single person if you let him use you. He'll use every single person. International business people raised up and opened the door for you in governments. And I mean, it's never ending what God will do if you'll just let him do it. You don't have to be in some kind of a mold or whatever. Well, I need to get into the ministry. Well, you're already in the ministry. I'll deputize you right now. Raise your right hand and I put you in the ministry today. Because every one of you have a ministry of reconciliation. Are you with me? And we're going to take with us as many people with us before we leave the earth. Amen. When you wake up in the morning, an alarm clock goes off in hell and the demons run around frantically trying to find some Tylenol and they go, oh, he's awake, they're awake, she's awake, oh, they're awake. 
What are they going to do? We need to contain them today. We just need to contain them. If we can contain those river people, then we'll stop them from doing what God's called them to do. But you, you're just so full of the Holy Ghost and you're intoxicated with a new wine. You're just drunk. You pay no attention. It's like the dogs bark, but the caravan keeps moving. You keep moving on down the road. Can you say amen? amen. Don't stop so the dog can relieve himself on your tire. Amen. Just keep moving. Just keep moving. I'm from Africa, and so that's how many know. That's what dogs do. They look for something to pee against. So don't hang around long enough. Amen. Just keep moving down the road. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, 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 so let me get to this now. I'm, I'm actually stalling you because... When I've tried to tell it before, I get really messed up anyway. So when the pastor welcomed me up to the platform and I went up, and as I stood there, the mo- it's the most amazing thing happened to me. And I'll get into some more of this tonight. But as I begin to pray and I said, Father, thank you for this great city. Every meeting that I ever had from 94 till that moment all converged into one like a laser beam and hit me. And I couldn't even talk. And I heard the Lord say, nothing is lost. It's in the eternity of eternities. So in other words, what we do in the Holy Ghost and by the Holy Ghost is not lost. It's all in the eternity. It's all on record. That's why for me, even though I look back at 32 years of age or myself now now at 58, to me, it's the same moment. It's just you see more than you saw back then because you were dealing with what you knew at the time. It's not that our doctrine changed or what we believe changed. It's just we have a broader vision. We, we see things as you know what will happen as you grow older. Are you with me? That's just how it is. And your hairs get white with the frost of many winters, you know. And, and, and then you just begin to see some things. And that's why the younger need to learn from the older. The, don't treat elderly with disrespect. Don't treat them like they're old and they just you know, need to go off into the sunset and go to retirement home. Learn from them. You can learn from every senior person vital clues to your life and things, practicalities of what you need to know. Do not treat elderly people with disdain or disrespect because you will be old one day and you will receive treatment like you can't even begin to imagine. Treat them with kindness and treat them with, with, with respect and ask them, say, if you see I'm doing anything, please tell me. If you see I do anything wrong, please tell me. I don't want to make mistakes. I know you've lived longer than me. Can you help me? And I'll tell you what, if you'll do that and you'll stay humble, God will always help you and you'll save yourself millions of dollars and many years of troubles and that will go the same for people in the ministry. Can you say amen? So it's very important. So what I begin to realize, and and of course I'm seeing this, I knew it, but I didn't maybe know how to vocalize it. How is it possible that these things are in the eternity of eternities? Okay, so let me ask you a question. If there was a way that I could find the recording of the woman with the issue of blood where she was healed in Mark chapter 5, and I could say, you won't believe what we found in the archives. We have an actual film footage of Jesus and the woman getting healed. You know, let's say we could access that. And I played it today. Do you think that that would be any different than if we opened the Word and we read Mark chapter 5 and we heard and saw what took place? It wouldn't change anything. It wouldn't change one thing. 
I've spoken to people, you know, they, uh, they, they had an experience that went to heaven, you know, and they said, well, do you want me to tell you? I said, you don't need to. What do you mean? You don't want to know? I said, no, I've, I've already been there. What do you mean? Because you can't be in these meetings in the eternity of eternities and not be in that realm. Are you with me? Somebody says, yeah, but you didn't see it. I see what the Lord wants me to see. If he wants me to see anything else, he'll show me. But I'm not going to be looking for stuff I shouldn't be looking for. Amen? I mean, if the apostle Paul said, I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, where the in the body, out of the body, cannot tell such one caught up in the third heaven. And he said, I heard and saw things that are not even lawful for man to speak. And he couldn't even tell it. Then who are we to say, well, I'm going to just speak everything that, you know. There's certain things the Lord will allow you to say and certain things you shouldn't say. There's things, somebody said, well, we, it wouldn't be great if we could all go, go to heaven now. God won't let you go to heaven now. You want to know why? Because you wouldn't want to come back. Why would, you, why would the Lord open the window for you to come in there and then you live here miserably knowing what you've seen up there? And <laughs> I mean, come on, really think about it. You don't have to go to heaven now because he came from heaven now so that you could experience heaven on earth and you could walk by faith and you could trust him. So that we're not looking for some extra revelation or something that nobody else knows. The Bible, the Word of God, contained in the Scripture, is everything that you need to know. You don't need to know anything else. If it's not in the Scripture, you don't need to worry about it. Stop looking for other revelation. Stop looking. Well, I, I tell you, we, you know, I heard one preacher said, he said, we've exhausted everything out of the Scripture and we need some new revelation. <laughs> you fail. We don't need any of that stuff. We've got it in the Word. Can you say amen? amen. This is very important that you understand because the Word is a lamp on your feet and a light on your pathway. There's many people, especially in the charismatic circles, and, uh, well, I won't say, I'll just say charismatic circles. If you were traditional Pentecostal, you wouldn't be involved in that, but charismatic circles where they're looking for manifestations or they're looking for experiences in God. So they're going to the new age movement to go study what they do to see maybe there's something we missed. I heard this the other day, it still comes as a shock to me and I have to verify it, but a leading minister took another minister to a place and this guy kind of operates in a word of knowledge and he had a lady stand up and the guy got up and said that your aunt is talking to me right now. Well, the aunt is dead. What? And a major ministry sat there while the guy was actually operating by divination, you know. That's the moment I would have jumped up and said, excuse me, excuse me, uh, they're talking to your dead aunt. There's a big problem here. That is a familiar spirit, right? in operation right there. But because of people's hunger for the supernatural, they're willing to accept anything. First of all, we do not talk to the dead. We don't talk to the dead. We do not talk to the dead. Your dead aunt is not gonna come tell you anything. She's not gonna talk about your kitty cat who had a name called Melody. Whatever. And, and then you stand in, <laughs> and, 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 and your aunt says how much you love the cat. <laughs> Come on. That's not even God. But this is stuff that's happening in the church world. I was like horrified, which I'm still going to find out what, and I'm going to deal with. I, not that, you know, I can't bring, I mean, people are either going to listen to you or not, but if they listen to you, they'll save themselves. If they won't listen, they go off into oblivion. Because people want to operate in the word of knowledge. Pastor, you have a word for me. I don't. No, you have a word for me. The Lord told me you have a word for me. I do not have a word for you. No, you have a word for me. Give me my word. I don't. I've had people do this. No, you have a word for me. Okay, okay, I have a word. The word is, I have no word. If God speaks to me, I'll tell you. 
but I'm not going to suck something out of the first book, Imaginations. <laughs> Hello. To try to be spiritual. I'm actually giving you a word now. If you receive it, you, it'll help you. Amen. Amen. So to live in the eternity of eternities where Jesus is. And in the Holy Ghost, we get caught up into that place. And he gives us a taste of heaven. Enough so we can walk in victory here on the earth. Without us just leaving permanently. Hello. Yes. I promise you, if a ladder came down right now and there was a door going up to heaven, <laughs> I would climb that ladder and I wouldn't come back. Not for a hundred million. I love my wife, I love my kids, I love my grandkids. I would just climb and go, I love you, I'll see you later. <laughs> Seriously. The Lord would have to tell me, you have to go back, your work's not done. Because let me tell you, when you enter into that place, that's why heaven is so real. Let me tell you, you don't want to miss out what God has for you, for anything that the earth has to offer. Nothing that the earth has to offer do you want to trade for what God has for you in the eternity of eternities. Okay, so let me, let me bring it down into the natural here for a moment. If a thousand years is a day, and a day is a thousand years. My oldest brother died 41 years ago this week. That's when I stood by his deathbed and made a vow, said, devil, you pay for this. You'll rue the day you touch my family. People are going to laugh at you all over the world. I didn't know God would give us a ministry of joy. Then a year later, the fire falls on me. 40 years ago, the fire falls on me. So it's really about an hour ago. For a thousand years is a day, days is a thousand years, that's about an hour. 40, 40, 40 years, 41 years, about an hour. So about an hour ago, the fire fell on me. And I went in the ministry. About 45 minutes ago, revival broke out in upstate New York, and you guys were in those meetings. It was just 45 minutes ago. People think it was, a, you know, 1989, 30 years ago. No, it's about 45 minutes ago. Amen. 45 minutes ago, revival broke out in upstate New York. 30 minutes ago, we went to Madison Square Garden to preach. That great meeting that went for six weeks. About 20, 29 minutes ago, Kelly left and went to heaven. About 22, 23 minutes ago, my father left and went to heaven. And my mom's been up about a minute. <laughs> really? When you think about it? If you live another 40 years, it's just two hours. Like a little blip on the screen of eternity. Psh, that was your life. There it is. There, there it is. That's it. It's one little thing in the thousands of years that have spanned humanity. It's one little, like that. Well, I want to leave a legacy. I want to leave. Listen, 200 years from now, nobody's even going to know your name, even if you built the greatest building and put your name in the stone. Because I've been there. I walked to New England. I walked around, and the, the, the names are everything. And you go, who's this guy? We don't even know. But he was a great influential person. The 250 years ago, they lived there. They did this. They what? But nobody knows. You have to go research. You have to pull a book out of some kind of a library to kind of study to find out what they did. Well, I want to leave a legacy. The, the place that you leave something is in eternity, not here on the earth. It's not, it's not in the house or the car or any, the, the, the foundation, my foundation and my uh, uh, greater humanitarian works for the whatever to save the poor, save the spotted owl. And, the, the, you know, I, I mean, it's like people are crazy. They're crazy. They're looking for everything in the now. When my mom passed away last year, we had to go get a plot for her. I found out I have 12. I didn't even know. When, when Kelly died, I ended up with 12, you know, 12 lots. Lord, how big is my family? 
you know. So we're trading it off, you know, trying to work something out with them, the bunch of crooks, the funeral homes and parlors and stuff like that, the biggest bunch of scam artists on the face of God's green earth, you know, because they use, they use calamity to upsell you, you know. Wouldn't she have loved this? <laughs> she loved horses, didn't she? Well, we have the new lining of, you see the pictures of horses on the inside of the coffin. She would really love that. <laughs> and they milk you for all that they want. It's, 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 it's a big scam thing. These handles on the coffin. They all look like they're serious, but they're all happy because they're going to make money. Another one bites the dust, and another one gone. But they can't look happy. They can't look happy. Have you seen them? Poor bearers. But they're actually happy because they, money, they make money in death. And so we were driving around, they showed me this mausoleum, a very wealthy man in the city of Tampa built this mausoleum. He's not dead, he's alive. And he built it, I think, 20 years ago, spent millions of dollars on it. Apparently, every two weeks he comes with his Rolls Royce and parks it in the grave right in front of the mausoleum and shines the brass doorknobs on the thing. And when you look through the window, there's pictures of his jet and pictures of his Rolls Royce and all that kind of stuff. Folks, when you have so much money, you don't know what to do. You build yourself a tomb that is not going to help you the moment you breathe out your last breath. And it might be for your family to die, but let me tell you, if, if, the, uh, if, if everything continued three, four, five hundred years from now, there'd be another group of people to come in and demolish everything and build on where you were built, where you were buried. Hello. It's already happened over the centuries. All of the great cities of the world that we raced to the ground, the great civilizations that were brought to nothing. As long as you go into the toilet and not offended because I dressed your mausoleum that you just built. Everything you need is in the now by the Word of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit. And everything you're looking for is in eternity of eternities. That's why you have to attach your life to eternity now and not live for the now that's going to fade away. There's nothing wrong with working out. There's nothing wrong with exercise. You can get yourself a six-pack or a nine-pack. But I promise you right now, when you die, you'll have no pack. And some, and some will end up, they lost the six pack, lost the nine pack, and ended up with a barrel. Thank God to beautify yourself, but all of that's gonna come to an end. You came out of the womb shriveled. You will leave shriveled. There is no amount of Botox and facelifts that can transform that. You came out with no teeth, you will leave with no teeth. <laughs> Not everybody, but for the most part. Why am I saying this? Because everybody's putting their whole faith on the now in the next 10 and 20 and 30 years. I mean, it seems like yesterday I was standing in that pulpit. Yesterday I was 32 years old. Here we are. And it'll be like that. And I'll be standing here if Jesus tarries, 85 years old, you know. And I'll be thinking, oh, you know. I mean, because that's how life is. I remember my dad's 45th birthday. And then he went home at 81. So it's like that. Kenneth is 32. We were talking about something. He said, Dad, you know, I can use this for the next 14 years. I said, yeah, you'll be 44 at the time. He goes, stop it. <laughs> Amazing how that happens, isn't it? It's 
There's one thing you can't stop is age. It just creeps up on you. And just because somebody's old doesn't mean to say they're old in the sense their physical body's old, but inside they're still the same. They're still the same. They move slower, but they're still the same. That's why when you get older, don't try to do what young people do. You'll pull a muscle you haven't used in a long time. I mean, when young people challenge me to say, oh, please. I'm not, I'm not stupid. I haven't used those muscles in years, and I ain't going to about to use one now. And the next thing you know, you can't even move. Because you're still trying to prove I'm, I'm young again. You know, some people say, well, I'll just come down and beat you up. Uh, that's fine. I have a 45. I'll take out your kneecap. No problem. Yeah. Well, I'm a black belt and I got, I, I do Kung Fu. You, you better, you better have a lot more than Kung Fu. But. <laughs> no, what I'm trying to say is, look, you're going to get older. So, so is your whole life dependent upon your, yeah, what, if I can just leave a legacy, if I can just do something, then listen to what I'm telling you right now. Attach your whole life to eternity because that's where Jesus is. He's in the eternity of eternities. And where you're going to go is into the eternity of eternities. And when somebody dies for the people that remain, it's sad because you don't want to lose them. You want to, but they've gone on to their reward. They're walking in. Somebody said, rest in peace. What do you think people are going to do in heaven? Just lie there in the coffin, <laughs> resting in peace? When, first of all, the moment you go into heaven, you're young again, so you can run again. You pick up your friends, your loved ones, you dance, you go, I can't believe, I'm here, I see you. And you see Jesus. I mean, are you, do you understand what I'm talking about? Somebody said, well, how old will I be? You'll just be probably about 30. Because when God made Adam, how old was he when God made him? He was a man, fully grown man, so he could have been 30 years old. So you come along, how old is Adam? He's 30 years old. God said, no, I just made him. <laughs> no, he's 30 years. No, I just made him. I made him now. And Eve, how old is she? She was about 30. Uh, uh I just made her. Where did she come from? I took his rib out. While I was making her, I put him to sleep because Adam would have interfered in what God would have done. You know, hey, Lord, don't do this, do this, do this. So Adam was sleeping. That's why people go under the power because then God can talk to them and do a work in them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so Adam goes to sleep and God makes Eve Adam's come, Adam's formed out of the dust. Eve comes out of his rib. Adam wakes up from his sleep because there was not one animal that was suitable as a helpmate. Adam comes out of his sleep and he goes, wow, man. What? What is this? So that's why God let Adam sleep to make Eve, because when he woke up, man never slept again. You know what I'm saying? It's just like <laughs> the distraction is more than you can even know. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 So if you understand right now, that you are living in the eternity of eternity. Somebody say, but I'm here on earth, I have to go shower. Will we shower in heaven? You won't need a shower because you won't stink. <laughs> Amen. Aren't you happy with that? You won't need to take your clothes to the laundry. You won't have to do washing. Hey, honey, I think you got something on your robe. 
You know those chicken wings we were eating? Oh. Somebody said, what are we going to eat? It's going to be good. I know it's going to be good. I don't think it'll be chicken wings, but it's, it's going to be good. Because they're heavenly chickens. You won't be able to kill them, you know what I mean? You chop its head off, it head back up again, you know. So, nothing dies, you know. Nothing dies, you know what I'm saying? So the Bible talks about the trees and the fruit, the fruit that's available, you know. So... <laughs> But we'll eat, we'll eat, we'll, we'll drink of the cup of the wine of heaven. There'll be heavenly bread, I'm sure. And I don't know what kind of meat, because I kind of like meat, so I'm still trying to talk to the Lord about that. <laughs> Will we have any meat? Maybe we can hunt demons, you know. <laughs> no, bring them out, put them in a field, I shoot them, and we barbecue them, you know. But the meat probably doesn't taste that good, you know. So that wouldn't work. Anyway, my brain works like that. One thing, you know. But I know that it's heavenly food, so it'll be good. You, you, you put it in your mouth, you go, ah, oh, this is heavenly. Yeah, I don't think we should hunt chupacabras. I don't think chupacabras are good to eat. <laughs> Let me close with this, and we'll carry on tonight. Do not miss tonight, and then well, this whole week's going to be epic. So uh, I don't even know how far I got. I don't think I got anywhere. I didn't really get anywhere. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. 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 Whatever you're doing for the Lord will never be lost. It will wait for you in eternity. When we sow into the gospel, we laying up treasure in heaven where moth and rust cannot corrupt, where thieves cannot break through and steal. And so all of these things are eternal things that will wait for us on the other side. And then all the stuff that you think you're going to need now, Jesus is already getting stuff ready for you. As he said in my father's house and many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. So we know he's building a mansion, not like one of those little tiny houses that everybody's building today. <laughs> Jesus is building you a mansion. Think about that. And we were sitting, you know, this October will be 38 years. I was laughing because in the video I said it would be married 12 years. And so, 38 years, amazing, hey, honey, how time flies. But we were sitting just as a husband and wife, been married this long, uh, you, we just kind of know what each other's thinking. You don't really have to say much. You know, we, we, we talk, but we're kind of on the same wavelength and whatever. Anyway, so we were just sitting just quiet, just chilling, you know. She was working on something, I was working on something, just together. And she looked at me, and she said, honey, can I ask you a question? I said, yes. She said, um, do you think that the Lord will let me live with you in, in your mansion in heaven? <laughs> I was like, the, the greatest thing I ever, ever heard. I thought she still wants to be with me over there. Because most people look at us like, I can't wait when we get to heaven. <laughs> I'm going to be free of you. Uh, uh, you can live the other side, but I live over here. So... Trust me, that really moved me. I, 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 she said many things to me over the years, but that, that kind of blew me away. I, I was like blown away, you know. And I thought about that because in the Bible says you're not, you don't get married or have children and kind of stuff like that. So heaven's going to be kind of a different kind of a relationship. We understand that. Are you with me? 
But the fact that she just want to be there with me, I, thought, I said, don't worry, it's on order right now. The Lord's, and I said, I tell you what, you can have the mansion. I'll just live outside on the cross. No, because really, I mean, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be able to have done everything that we've been able to do. She's an amazing lady that God put in my life. So she can have the house. <laughs> Honey, you can have the house. I'll just be happy, you know. I'm just, I'm going to be happy. That's all I'm happy about. I don't care about any of that stuff. I don't care about it here. I'm sure I'm not going to care about it up there. Amen. And probably for the first million years, I won't go see anything. I'm going to be on my face crying holy, holy. I mean, they're going to have to drag me away. Angels will have to pick me up and carry me around. Come now, let me show you some other things here. Because when you see God as he really is, let me tell you, and when you see Jesus, and obviously we're going to see all our loved ones that have gone on before us. Can you imagine the grand reunion in the air? Because the Bible says that the trump is going to sound and the dead in Christ will rise, which might be some people sitting here today. The dead in Christ. No, I'm taking it back. But the dead in Christ will rise first. That, that means the graves will be open and the dead in Christ will rise up. Every Christian, every person that's been washed in the blood of the Lamb, wherever they are, their ashes, their bodies stunk to the bottom of the sea, whatever. It doesn't matter. They, they will rise at one moment. The dead in Christ will rise first. And we, which are alive and remain, will be caught up together with them in the clouds. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And there's going to be a meeting in the air. It is sweet, sweet by and by. And I want to see you there in that home beyond the sky. Such singing you will hear, never heard by mortal ear, will be glorious, I do declare. And God's own son will be the leading one in that meeting in the air. Hallelujah. You can't buy it. You can't earn it. You can't better yourself. You just humble yourself to receive what you don't even deserve. And he says, come, come. And once you get it, you go tell everybody. Everywhere you go, you go shout it from the mountaintops. You shout it from the rooftops till the whole world knows how wonderful he is, how awesome he is. That's why we run into 300 cities to light the fires, to light the fires, 300 cities. One more time, mobilize an army of men and women that will win souls, that will go outside the four walls of the church, that will plunder hell and populate heaven. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Everybody say, it's all in the eternity of eternities. So stop being worried today because things are never work out right the way here. These trials, they, they temporal. These, these light afflictions, the Bible says, it's just for a moment. This world's not your home. Just passing through. Will you bow your heads across this place? We'll continue tonight. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you've come in this room today, you're watching my way of television and you've never ever given your life to Jesus and you've never ever said, Jesus, come and be my Lord and Savior. Will you do that today? If today was your last day on the earth, you went home, put your head on your pillow, in the middle of the night, your heart stopped. Where would you go? Where would you spend eternity? I want you to know. There is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. You don't have to go to the devil's hell because 2,000 years ago on Calvary's cross, the price was paid and the blood was shed. And just like that old song said, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stain. Today, the power of sin will be broken. The power of guilt and shame will be removed from your life. You might have come in here one way, but you'll leave another way. Today, God calls you and he says, come. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'm going to give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come. He calls you. Maybe you've walked in this place or you're watching by way of television. You gave your life to the Lord in days gone by, but you've grown cold. You're not serving God like you should. There was a time when you were radically on fire for God, but something happened. You lost that peace. You lost that joy. You lost that first love. But today the Lord calls you and he says, come. He says, come. I'm going to restore to you. Maybe something hidden that no one can see. Pride, unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, anger, lust. The hidden things. But today he calls you, says, come. Will you let those things go from your life today? Maybe it's something outward that everyone can see. And because of that, you felt, well, it doesn't really matter anyway. God knows I'll never mount to anything. And so the devil used it against you to keep you in a place of guilt and condemnation. But today you say, you know what? I'm going to come. I'm going res- to surrender my life afresh today. I'm going to lay everything on the altar today. Maybe a storm came against your life. You were serving God and this thing hit you like a Mack truck from hell. Out of the blue, you weren't even expecting it. A sudden divorce, a bankruptcy, the loss of a loved one, a sudden illness, the betrayal of a close friend, the loss of a job. Something happened that rocked your world. It shook you to the core. But today you say, you know what? I'm going to come back. I'm going to give my life to the Lord. I'm going to surrender my life afresh. He said, I will take out the stony heart and put it in the heart of flesh. He said, a new spirit will I put within you. Will you do that today? Will you do that today? Oh, we, we always tell people, you can be hot, lukewarm, or cold. If, 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 if zero was cold and five was hot, where are you? Somebody said, well, I'm about a four. There's still not five. Today, you the one that looks in your heart and says, I'm going to get on fire for God. I'm going to surrender to him today. And then lastly, if you're in this place, you love the Lord, that's not even a question. But you're not sure of your salvation. You don't have the assurance. But today, you want to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're a child of God. If this is you right now, right where you are, quickly, put your hand up right now. Say, pray for me. If you fit into any one of these categories, raise up high, right at the back, another hand over there, another hand over there, another hand over here under the overhang, another hand over there, another hand over here. Quickly raise up high and say, yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Another hand over this side, another hand over there. Raise up high. Raise up high and say, yes, yes, yes. You can put your hands down now. I want you to look at me right now. On these categories that I've mentioned, If you did not raise your hand, but you want to be included in the prayer, I'm going to pray right now for these categories. Quickly, put your hand up and say, include me. Anybody else? Another hand there. Anybody else? Another hand over here. Anybody else? Another hand at the back. Another hand at the back. Anybody else? Quickly, raise up high. Raise up high. This section here, put your hand up high. Yes, yes. God bless you. God bless you. Another hand back there. Raise up high and say, yes, that's me. Anybody else? Raise up high and say, yes, Lord. Yes. I'm not leaving here the same way I came. Under the overhang, quickly, just slip your hand up and say, yes, that's me, include me. Thank you, thank you. God bless you, God bless you. This section here, slip your hand up and say, include me. Today is my day of freedom and liberty. I want every person that raised your hand, I want you to stand right where you are, please. Stand all across the building. Everyone that raised your hand, stand. Stand to your feet. I'm gonna ask you to come from where you are. Bring your personal belongings and come and stand right right here at the altar. We're going to pray. Come. Ushers, if you'd help them, bring them right now. Those that are watching by way of television today, as I call them here, we're going to pray together. And as I pray with them, I'm going to ask you to pray with me. And you can call the number on the screen. There are people standing by to pray with you and for you. But do that. Today is your day of salvation. Today is your day of deliverance and freedom. Come. He calls you. 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 Come. He calls you. Come. world behind me, the cross before me, the 
world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. No turning back. Turning back. No turning back. I want everybody standing if you'd look at me for a moment. We're going to pray one prayer fits all. And if you mean busy with God today, God means busy with you. And I've had the privilege of doing this for many years, 78 countries of the world. And everywhere we go, people say, I came forward. And they tell me where it was and what time of the month will be here. And then they tell me what the Lord's done. So I know what God's going to do here today. So we're going to pray one prayer. I want you to close your eyes and just raise your right hand to heaven. That's where your help comes from. And pray this after me. Say, Father, I come to you in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Lord, you said in your words, if I confess with my mouth, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. And I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead. I will be saved. So Father, right now, I confess Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart right now. Take out the stony heart put in a heart of flesh. Wash me. Cleanse me. Change me. Fill me. Use me. Let me never be the same again. I turn my back on the world. I turn my back on sin. And I follow you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. Thank you that on the third day you rose for me. And thank you that you're coming back again for me. From this day on, I'll never be the same again. I confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He is my Lord and my Savior. And right now, by faith in the finished work of the cross and by the shed blood of Jesus, I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me now. Now just lift both hands and begin to thank the Lord right now. Father, I pray even now that you would seal them now by your blood and by your spirit, that on that day not one would be missing. Raise them up to be mighty men and women of God and use them to impact this generation, we pray. I break everything of the flesh. I break everything of the enemy. Broken off of your life even now by the power of the blood. And let not one be missing on that day. From this day, let them begin to focus on the eternity of eternities. Let them take the eyes off of the natural and put their eyes on you. And we just thank you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said... Amen. Amen. As a servant of the Most High God, by the power of the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the Word of God, and by the awesome power of the Holy Spirit, I tell every single one of you right now, your sins are forgiven you. Right now, forgiven. You forgive it. You forgive it. Thank you for watching today on YouTube. Please press the subscribe button and also the notification button and like and get the word out so others can watch.